Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. The latest corset in the OCG, Power of the Elements, just dropped, and that means we've got a lot of new archetypes to cover this month, as well as updates to a particular storyline. One that you've all been waiting for an update for, I am of course referring to the multi-dimensional escapades of Vsaw Starfrost. Established in the last corset via the Scareclaw archetype, we're now privy to the next world they're visiting, as well as their new alternate reality doppelganger, presumably on a quest to stop their tyrannical alter egos holds over these other worlds, and collecting them as little phone charm chibis along the way. This time around, we're visiting Pelreno, the primal parallel ruined world, to visit the Tiara Laments, a theme of shadowy merfolk that are about to take fusion summoning to the next level. So let's wait around in the shallow end of the pool to see what's going on, dive into the deep end to explore the depths of what this theme is capable of, then see if there are any surprise additions milling about. It's time to talk about the tumultuous, troublesome troop, the Tiara Laments. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 30k, where we'll have Jack Atlas Explained, which includes Resonators, Red Dragon Archfiend, and whatever other cards were used by the Masta of Fosta! We've also got our Discord, where I personally enjoy our new Samurai Overlord. I'm also on Twitch, where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls pools. And don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Tiara Laments? Well, they're a series of dark attribute aqua type monsters that, if sent to the graveyard by a card effect, and I mean any card effect, you can fusion summon any fusion monster, and I mean any fusion monster, from your extra deck by placing fusion materials mentioned on it from your hand, field, or grave to the bottom of your deck in any order, including this card in your grave. So while you aren't able to miracle fusion any card in the game, you can make quite a few that require generic enough materials to encompass dark attribute aqua type monsters, and boy howdy do we have some targets for that. But for now, let's talk about the theme proper, starting with Tiara Laments Meru, a level 2 monster with 800 attack and 2000 defense, and if this card is normal or special summoned, you can send the top 3 cards of your deck to the grave. Ah, uh, I love the smell of normal summon Dante Mill 3 in the morning. While not doing anything themselves, Meru only has to trip one grave effect to make their summon worthwhile, and with proper deck building you'll find the odds of that to be quite high. Heck, even hitting another Tiara Lament means triggering a fusion summon, which gives you a pretty good vector to hammer away at your opponent. Tiara Laments Hoffinus is a level 3 monster with 1600 attack and 1000 defense, and when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field as a quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, send the top 3 cards of your deck to the grave. This is absolutely an incredible card. While not exactly a powerhouse when going first, it's incredible during almost any other stage of the game, even during your own turn if your opponent has onboard quick effect ready monsters. You can even play during turn 1 when your opponent's on the play, by chaining to any on-field starter, milling 3, and potentially hitting even more gas before you even draw for a turn. And bonus, you don't even have to worry about getting run over in the battle phase, cause they won't have one. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see this card seeing play in any Grave Reliant deck as a way to throw more cards into the grave even quicker. Heck, I'm already thinking of putting it in PK Fire. It's a level 3 dark for crying out loud. They know what they were doing. How could I not take a stab at it? Tiara Laments Shaylin is a level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 1300 defense, and during your main phase you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, send a monster from your hand to the grave. Then send the top 3 cards of your deck to the grave. So while all of our monsters are adept at triggering the grave effects of our in-deck monsters, Shaylin is here to make sure our in-hand monsters don't miss out on all the fun. Let me bring your attention to the lack of a semicolon here. This means none of this is done as cost, so any card that triggers by being sent to the grave by effect will trigger, including our Tiara Laments, though notably this does not trigger on discard effects. Sorry Bigfoot! They also have a great level and battle stats spread, so even if you completely whiff on the milling effect, not likely but it can happen, then you have a relatively strong bruiser that can sort of help you. But like with Scareclaw, Tiara Laments have an odd one out that's a mirror copy of Vsauce in this world. Hey, v 
Vsauce, Golden Nova here. Did you know that graveyards are actually the banished zone, but in reverse? <laughs> Tiara Laments Rhino Heart is a level 4 water warrior monster with 1500 attack and 2100 defense. And if normal or special summoned, you can send a Tiara Laments monster from your deck to the grave, except itself. And if this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. And if you do, send a Tiara Laments card from your hand to the grave. So whereas the rest of our monster's mills can vary wildly in quality, from hitting three explosive cards to a complete mess, Rhino Heart is a targeted foolish burial effect that guarantees you'll be triggering a fusion summon. And it's an absolutely devastating card to hit off of your mills for your opponent, as you can trade a Tiara Laments card in your hand to revive Rhino, and then immediately foolish another Tiara Laments. So like Reichhart, they're one of the best cards of the theme, and you you want to see them early and often. Now, we've got to take a brief detour here, because now that we have another member of the Starfrost Continuum, we can now see the patterns that they're likely to follow. One, they're all warriors, and the archetype-specific ones are level 4, so Reinforcement of the Army is going to continue being a great card. Two, the main deck heart monsters have the reverse stats of Vsauce, sporting 1500 attack and 2100 defense, whereas Mr. Starfrost here has 2100 attack and 1500 defense. Another aspect that I expected to be the same among them was the Clear New World style galactic arm that Vsauce and Reichhardt share. And while it's hard to see any in this art, there are others that show it present, even if it's not front and center. They also all have the three hair highlights in the same place, just with different colors, which is hella cute. I don't know about y'all, but they've definitely stolen my heart. Alright, now it's time to talk about our fusions, the ones that tie everything together. Tiara Laments Kit Kalos is a level 5 monster with 2300 attack and 1200 defense, requiring a Tiara Laments monster and an Aqua monster as material. If this card is special summoned, you can take a Tiara Laments card from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the grave, making this a very flexible extender. They can also target a monster you control, then special summon a Tiara Laments monster from your hand or grave, and if you do, send the targeted monster to the grave, letting you swap the places of your monsters while triggering your Tiara Laments effects, among other things. And if this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, you can send the top five cards of your deck to the grave. Now, you can only use each of their effects once per turn, so you can't chain multiple Kit Kaloses in the same turn, but this does mean you can dig ridiculously deep to find your best grave cards. And in the future, you can shuffle back Kit Kalos as fusion material to do it all over again later. And because they made them a level 5, it's the perfect target for instant fusion. You still get the Searcher Foolish, then you can swap out Kit Kalos for any of your Yarded Tiara Laments, and then get the Big Mill. Seems like Kit Kalos is here to finish the job that Norton started in getting rid of instant fusion. It's all a conspiracy by Big Ready Fusion to bury the ramen competition. I'm telling you, it's true, it's all on the internet. It's, the, the people wouldn't lie on the internet. Tiara Laments Kaleido Heart is a level 9 Dark Fiend monster? With 3000 attack and defense, requiring Tiara Laments Rhino Heart and any two Aqua monsters as material, and cannot be used as fusion material. Glad we dodged the Albaz bullet on that one. If this card is special summoned, or if any number of Aqua monsters are sent to the grave by a card effect while this card is on the field, you can target a card your opponent controls and shuffle it into the deck. And if this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, you can special summon it, and if you do, send a Tiara Laments card from your deck to the grave. A bit of an improvement over their base form, as it can only send Tiara Lament monsters. I'm a little sad the first effect targets, but it's kind of the only thing keeping it balanced. Shuffling a card into the deck is a great way to ensure your opponent doesn't see it ever again, and keeps it from triggering any effects it might have had after it leaves the field. And you get to keep doing this basically every turn, as you'll have ways to trigger it on both players' turns. Also, gotta say, great lore touch making the removal lineup with how our deck fusion summons. It's kinda like our opponent's cards are getting consumed by our own. And while it lacks protection itself, it's got some strong self-recursion, while also having Kit Kalos on standby to revive it if your opponent outpaces Kaleido's regeneration. We've got an incredibly powerful boss monster here that any deck could be proud of, and for us lore fiends, you can finally get a better look at that galaxy skin creeping in, kinda like with Trickheart. And speaking of fiends, uh, could you explain where that typing is coming from? You're kind of messing with what I thought were some established conventions here. Okay, that's all our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. And we're starting off with Pelreno, the Primal Parallel Ruined War- 
Okay, that's all our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps, and we're starting off with Palreno, the Primal Parallel Ruined Realm, a field spell that adds a Tiara Laments monster or Vsauce Staff Frost from your deck to your hand when activated. It grants all of your fusion monsters and Tiara Laments monsters a 500 attack boost, and if any number of Tiara Laments monsters are returned from your field and or grave to the deck and or extra deck, except during the damage step, you can target a card on the field and destroy it. So it seems we have a few more parallels. Each of the themes in this storyline will have a field spell that shows off the world while searching us Vsauce or a member of its respective theme, and gives us some card removal as long as we do what the deck is intending to do. Rephobia required there to be three or more defense position monsters on the field, and Pelreno wants us to return our monsters to the deck, presumably by way of their fusion summoning effects. I also like how it's encouraging our usage of generic fusion monsters, since they get roped into the attack boost as well. There's just so much to talk about when it comes to this card. It's certainly got layers. Tiara Laments Meta Noise is a normal trap that you can activate if you control a Tiara Laments monster or Vsauce Starfrost. It targets a face-up monster your opponent controls and changes it to face-down defense position, then sends a TR Laments monster from your deck to the grave. And if this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, you can target a TR Laments monster in your grave and add it to your hand. That's right, even our trap cards gain effects when sent to the grave by effect, so not only do our mills have even more good targets, we might also want to run some Foolish Burial Goods as well. But back to the topic at hand, being a Book of Moon with the added perk of Foolish Burial is kinda nice, I'd have preferred being able to use the effect faster, like OG Book of Moon, but regardless, flipping a monster face down can be a huge detriment to a deck's play sequences, especially ones that require monsters for synchro, Xyz and Link summons, or if you need to have a specific kind of monster on board. Kinda like ours! So, like the name says, I wouldn't be surprised to see this card making some noise in the meta sometime soon. Tiara Laments Salik is a continuous trap that, if you control a Tiara Laments monster or Vsauce Starfrost, lets you target an effect monster on the field, negate its effects, then has you sending a monster you control to the grave. And if this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, you can add a Tiara Laments monster from your deck to your hand. A repeatable source of effect negation ain't bad, and even sending your monsters to the grave can lead to getting even more cards by triggering your effects, though remember, as a continuous trap card, MST does negate. But even at that point, you're still getting a surge from the destruction, so as long as you don't get Cosmic Cyclone, you'll be getting your cards back one way or another. And if that does happen, then... Yeah, I could understand you getting pretty salty over losing Salik. Our last card is Tiara Laments Crime, a counter trap that can be activated in response to a spell card, trap card, or monster effect, so long as you control a Tiara Laments monster or Vsauce Starfrost. You negate the activation, shuffle that card into the deck, once again, great theming, then send a monster from your hand to the grave. And if this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, you can target one of your banished Tiara Laments monsters and add it to your hand. This is probably only going to apply to Rhino if it gets banished by its own effect, but it's nice to have the option to get anyone in the archetype, in case they get like Karma Cutted or something. And it certainly ain't bad to have an Omni Negate in your back pocket. Sure, you need to have a monster in hand to activate, but like Salik, it's all part of the overall synergies. We also see what appears to be one of the Tiara Laments controlling Kaleido Heart, or stabbing them through the, you know, heart, which might explain why they're a fiend type. It also looks like Vsauce didn't just get a Chibi Companion, but also took Reich's Sweet Sword. So it's good to see that Vsauce is holding to one of the most important adventurer tenants. You always loot the body. Okay, so that's all the Tiara Laments cards, but what do we do with them? Well, the theme actually doesn't have very many power cards on its own. Kaleido Heart is strong, don't get me wrong, but that's about the only strong thing we have. So since we can fusion summon other monsters, we'll need to rely on them as well to help close things out. So we'll be looking for themes we can splash in to help make some waves. So what can we play to help them out? First off, what fusions can we add effectively to our deck? Well, it's hard to ignore Shadal's here, especially El Shadal Winda. It's immune to effect destruction from our opponent and floodgates their special summons, an effect that never stopped being good ever since it was released. And it's pretty easy to make because all the Tiara Laments that use this effect are dark. By adding other Shadal's, you gain the opportunity to trigger their effects as well, which means searching, back row destruction, and drawing. And if you run Bay Shadal Fusion, which I think you should, you can even tech in El Shadal Anoyatilis, using Rhino Heart as the water material. 
It's a very narrow floodgate effect, but it does keep your opponent from ritual summoning in the Drytron matchup, turns off Boot Sector launch, and stops Tri Brigade Revolt because the first part is all about summoning monsters from the grave with a trap card's effect. A very funny option is to use Tiara Laments in an Egyptian God deck. All of our monsters are already Aquas, and while we have no level 10s, we're probably already running Guardian Slime if we're doing that, so we've got that material covered. Now, you aren't going to be getting its search effect if you mill it, but by fusioning with our Tiara Laments, it'll go back into our deck so we can try again later. Despians are really going to love these effects. All of their fusions have a generic dark monster requirement, Tragedy will trigger off of being milled, and if a Luber gets sent to the grave because of it, then you have the revival effect and negation all loaded up for when you get a fusion on board. You can also pair them with Albaz to make Lebelion, which can then fusion summon any number of other fusion monsters. And how do we get Albaz in the grave? With branded fusion, of course. I mean, what else are we gonna do in TR Laments? Synchro Sun. Hold that, we would do that. Vsauce exists. What are we gonna do in TR Laments? Exceeds. No, actually, those are really generic. Um, uh, what are we gonna do in TR Laments? Links. Uh, oh, forget it. Move on to the next one. Mud Dragon of the Swamp can be an interesting pick if you don't have any other options to summon. Once you add a non-Aqua Dark monster to your grave, say with, uh, Shadals, your TR Lament fusions can put it onto the board and give your monster some targeted effect protections. Predaplant Dragostapelia and Chimera Flecia are both pretty sweet includes. For Drago, you can recycle Kit Kalos and get a 2700 attack monster that's got some great monster effect negation. While Chimera Flecia gives you Banishing Removal, a powerful battle effect that gets over just about anything, and can search you polymerization or fusion spell cards. And you don't even have to run any main deck predator plant monsters to use it. Just make the birds And once it's in the grave, you'll have it for later turns. And what can you use with Verte Anaconda? A, a branded fusion, I just said! So those are the fusion synergies, but what about with aqua monsters? Well, what if I told you that a theme that has some funny synergy with us is Gradle. See, a monster I haven't really brought up a lot here in this video is Vsauce Starfrost. And while they work very well with our TR Laments, popping them for its summon is sending it to the grave by a card effect after all, it also triggers Gradle Eagle, which can then steal one of our opponent's monsters. From that point on, we can link it off, or use it as synchro material with Starfrost because for some reason it's also a tuner. And because the Gradles are Aquas, they can be used as fusion material for our summons. We also can't ignore some of the best Aqua archetypes in the game, Frogs and Paleozoics. Totally Awesome is an outstanding negate, and Paleos provide a lot of interruption. Fun fact, Dino Mishus' discard is part of its effect, so it also triggers all of our TR Lament cards. I guess we also can't ignore how useful Dogmatica would be here for us. It's pretty easy to get an extra deck summoned monster onto the board, and with a little comboing, you can have access to Dogmatica Fleur for quick effect negation. Alternatively, you can get Maximus on board to do some extra deck shredding, which leans into the Shadal gameplay by searching a Schism, helps out our game plan by yarding Kit Kalos to get that big 5 mil, and it can even help the weirder strategies by milling a copy of Egyptian God Slime to be used as fusion material for another, as well as the Preda plants, specifically Chimera for that sweet, sweet value. As for a silly tech pick, well, it is frustrating that, with all the fusion monsters nowadays having generic monster type materials, that we're stuck with Aqua, one of the least used. Well, we won't be stuck with that for long if we use Rebirth Judgment, the card that looked at Zombie World and thought, hey, what if every type could do that? By making all your graveyard monsters dragons, you could fusion summon Borrowed Furious Dragon or Five-Headed Dragon, make them rocks to summon Fossil Warrior Skull King, or Spellcasters to summon the Mighty Quintet Magician! And that's all I have to say about Tiara Laments. They're a compact fusion engine that has quite a bit of room to grow. While their restriction of having to use themselves as fusion material means there's a lot we can't do, I wouldn't be surprised if future releases helped expand our options, perhaps with an ability that's a bit more streamlined than Rebirth Judgment. In fact, I'm sure it'll be so good that it'll leave our opponent in tears. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Tiara Laments mermaid to succeed, or are they going to need a bit more time before this grain of sand becomes a gleaming pearl? 
Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to show your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Adam Zagedel, Nebula Navigators, Ava Goulet, Ashling Waltz, Benjamin Meisner, Biohazard011, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Lorakia, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Ruxith Sarani, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, Rem T. Bright, and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to see another fusion deck that loves its dark monsters, check out this video I did covering Luna Lights. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenkin I's latest series, Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.